world real world space in a long time first meeting since january of 20. <laughs> Good to have you back. I've been zooming ever since. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Carrie, I had to find your I had to go find your name tag because oh. it wasn't even out here. It's been that long since you showed your face I'm surprised they didn't throw it in the trash can. <laughs> Distribute other information for the second meeting. I am. <coughs> Do you want it now? I, I just I figured I it was something. easier they if there was less the stuff LED there for street you. Yeah, okay. They are starting with throughout the whole time. I try to take care of you. One of the first ones. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let me know, but of course, you can't help their own animal again, Man. you know. But yeah, they're starting all over the township now. They're so. definitely great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a shock when I first and saw just it. Just because she <laughs> left with a cough doesn't well, mean come on. We had that discussion and they decided to yeah. change all that over. I was asking you about it. They change them. I'm down now to like it. Yeah, like I said, I was I wasn't aware they were starting, but they're yeah. all up and down Centerville. They're on running Let's pump now and That's some other developments. Yes, they use less juice. A whole lot. They save us a whole lot of money too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last forever, I'm sure. <laughs> How's it going? Scott, how are you? How are you? Thanks. Yeah. Mr. Lefevre. Good evening. Everything okay at the Lefevre compound? Mm. <laughs> yeah, we got a little device to hang on the doorknob of the porch door. It's very sensitive. Okay. So yeah. we'll see what that brings. Have there been any other reported incidents in the area? Except there's a, a patron of the Amish market. 
it as it were across the street has twice come in and taken the quarter, the quarters and dimes and money out of the till. She got his license number the second time though. Okay. There goes up in the middle of my row. It's fine. I catch and keep as a pet. <coughs> I wouldn't have to mow my grass. <laughs> Diane, do you know this okay. roadway line for Spring Valley? That was narrowing the cartway, making a wider. I should ask Perry. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but it's on your agenda. Pardon? It's on your agenda. Yeah, I know. Yes. I was looking at the agenda. Relining. Re okay. Adjusting the spacing and. Yeah. Okay, is everybody ready? Yep. Okay. It is six o'clock, and we're going to call the East Hemfield Township Traffic Commission meeting to order. Uh, would you please join me uh, and rise for a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And now the pledge. The pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So our traffic report, any comments on the traffic report for March? It all seems to be even the 85th percentile within the 10 mile buffer, as it were. So I guess Lieutenant Brew Baker at this moment, um, would that, we say that speeds. we don't have a speeding problem? Those are the speed studies. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that what we're referring to? I was just talking about the traffic report. It's item number two, the March traffic report. That is a separate document. I thought it was a, it was a heading. Okay. And there might not, it's, it doesn't look like there's much in here that's that we're not aware of or that's different. So if there's not, then we can move on to the speed study. So Mr. Lefevre in the speed study, I, I noticed the same thing that all of them with the exception of uh, when we go down to South Colebrook Road, right? Uh, they seem to be within the 85th percentile, seem to be within that 10 mile an hour uh, range. So with South Colebrook Road, there is a a trail crossing on that road, correct? Um, where the speed study was done, that is between Long and Landisville. Okay. So there is the there is the trail crossing, but that's further north than where the speed study was done. This was done in the area of uh, Whitmer's Automotive on okay. South Colebrook. So would that be the other side of Landisville Road? That would be the south side of Landisville. Okay, gotcha. So the trail's up on the north end by okay. the road. Historically, there have been <clears throat> speed checks at, near Minders. Yes. I think that area has been patrolled. I had an ind individual pass me in that area. I was doing the speed limit, of course. No more, but uh, <laughs> it's interesting how they travel there sometimes. Lieutenant Brubaker, is there I mean, do you have any recommendations or anything that we you think we should be doing there? Um, the locations that were that the studies were done over the past four to six weeks, um, you know, each one has some outliers as far as speed, and definitely should remain on a, a rotating list for us to maintain visibility and enforcement. Um, but at this point, I think most of the data um, indicates that they're properly posted as far as the speed limit. Um, based on that 85th percentile as well as the average speed. So I think at this point on the police department's end, just keeping them in mind for message boards on occasion, rotating through as well as keeping them on our 
our active list of places for, as I said, visibility enforcement, but um, at this point, no other um, substantial <coughs> changes are recommended by us. Okay. Public comment on that. Sure. Is there anything else from the board? Mr. Weaver, you? okay. Any comment on this, the speed studies that we're talking about? Okay. Any, anyone from Zoom? Uh, Judy's the only one on Zoom. Okay. So. Then we'll move on to the minutes, uh, the March 16th minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Okay. Motion by Mr. Weaver, seconded by Mr. Lefevre. All those in favor of approving the March 16th minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries three to zero. Old business uh, roadway line cost estimate for Spring Valley Road. My uh, site doesn't allow me to open that. Yeah, I could open it earlier and I can't right now either. I'm I can sure. put it up for you if you'd like. Yeah, that'd be great. Please. <clears throat> the bid number we got for um, the striping there from Alpha Space was uh, $5,700 and uh, 577936 And that was to repaint the lines, you know, and shrink the lane width. Um, I couldn't open it either. I just, I was able to make a screenshot of it there, but. And they are, they are our co-stars. Well, they're not co-stars. They are actually our county um, co-op bid company who does our normal line painting. So okay. um, that is the best price that we could get. So, okay. That is from Centerville Road to Roarstown Road or to Sylvan or? I think it's Sylvan to Centerville, I think. I could be wrong. I, I was not here when they did the study, but it, it, looking at the linear footage, I would think it's pretty much that whole distance. Yeah. Okay. 10,560 feet. So divided by two. No, that's the young No, one. that's the middle lane. That's the other one's the. That's the straight line distance. Yeah, I don't have my copy of that. Sorry. Two miles. <clears throat> that would be a mile. Yeah, okay. Two miles, two miles. Yeah. <clears throat> So are we in favor of moving forward with that? That seems no. to be the recommendation from our traffic engineer consultant. So okay. is there any best price? No. So, yep, I'm for it. Okay. Any comments from the audience on that? <clears throat> okay. So it's for narrowing the roadway um, and which will reduce the speed um, during d along that stretch of the roadway. From the last last meeting's minutes, it was to de decrease westbound travel lane from 12 feet to 11 feet, slightly increasing the white and yellow line widths traveling westbound. This will narrow the lanes and hopefully speeds. Um, it's the section between Centerville Road and I believe it's all the way up to 741. Um, does it indicate in the minutes? Um, between I, I know they're going to widen from Sylvan to Center to 741, but the other ones actually from Sylvan up, they're actually going to narrow it mm -hmm. uh, and widen the stripage. <clears throat> so the minutes say thicker line painting could occur between Sylvan and Centerville. Are you aware of the history of this road in the last two years in East Hempfield Township? But just for meeting minute, for meeting minute purposes, sir, could I have you come to the microphone to speak? And um, if you could please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Scott Armstrong, and I live on Corvair Road, which is just about 75 yards up the street from 
Spring Valley Road, and I've lived there for 16 years. So, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with the road. Um, the section that you're talking about narrowing is already really, really narrow. Um, my view on that would be to widen that road. If you really want to make that road safer, you put a path in or widen it. Um, the people who are walking, jogging, biking, skateboarding, and everything else on that road uh, actually create kind of a traffic hazard from my point of view on that. And I, I think that's from the folks that I've talked to, that seems to be pretty much a consensus. If you really want to make the road safer, widen it, don't narrow it. I, I don't know. I don't know what you'd be thinking of, of narrowing the road there. Um, sure. You know, they're not actually narrowing the road, they're narrowing the line, the striping to give you the perception of a narrower road. Okay. They're not cutting off any of the road itself. Okay. They're actually just moving in the lines and you know you get a visual effect that the road is smaller. So hopefully you'll slow down. All right, well, okay. <laughs> I, I could see that as an option. I just wanted to know what, I, the reason I'm at the meeting today is I just wanted to know what's the plan going forward with the speed bumps, humps, everything else that's going on in that road, which I am adamantly against. So I think we decided at our last traffic commission meeting not to have speed bumps Terrific. on Spring Valley Road. Terrific. And if that accomplishes the goal of slowing people down, super. Right. You know, I was going to say that and more enforcement, you know, instead of it's instead of having everyone uh, adjust the speed bumps or address the speed bump type of thing. Ticket the people that are going 40 miles an hour. You know, if they're going 40, 45 miles an hour, ticket them. You know, give them a $200 ticket. They won't be doing, you get two or three of those and they won't be doing that very much longer. So I think, um, and just a little history here, I think we've done some speed enforcement there and it's yielded very little result um, as far as. Depends on which section of Spring Valley. Um, if we're further down in the, the flat section, not necessarily where. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we can we can get some some decent speeds through there depending on the time of day. Yeah, I, th I think most of the people seem to be driving. Literally, I think most of the people seem to be driving between twenty five and thirty miles an hour. That's that's my observation on the road from driving that thing every day. That's what they pretty much seem to be doing. Okay, good. That that's what I was here for. Okay, thank you. That was easy enough. Any other comments from the audience? Okay. So do we have a motion to approve uh, the expenditure to restripe Spring Valley Road? Um, Moved. <laughs> motion to approve by Mr. Lefevre. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Weaver. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. I'm, I'm assuming with that and the no speed humps, I can remove the covered signs that are there for the old speed humps. Yes. Okay. Because we just bagged them because we weren't sure if they were coming back or not. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. Are they going to be there? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we planned on it. That's what we were going to do. Yeah. That's what it was to be was uh, Chief Skiles, now Brubaker, and Mr. Madonna would decide where to put them where to put the speed signs and rotate them during the year. I mean. So up next, we have the Shank Mill Bridge um, truck restriction study. Ms. Garber, did you wanna, are you able to run with this? I, I, I can, and I think um, Jen has Sergeant Lombardo's comments. Um, basically, we had discussed this at a previous meeting and had set it aside until the county completed their study. Um, you have the county study. Um, that study is very focused on um, the health of the bridge itself and not anything outside of that because the only piece that the county owns and operates is the actual bridge itself as far as, um, as, far as that study goes. Um, there have been discussions with Raffo Township. Uh, it seems like there is some willingness there potentially to work together moving forward, um, but no actual um, 
<coughs> action on that up to this point. Um, and so this is just to follow up to a previous item to ensure that you have the information um, both from the county study and then Sergeant Lombardo's comments on it as well. I have his, uh, his speed study in particular for Shankland. Um, I don't have a, a truck study at this point, but I do have a speed study for both uh, the north and south side of, of Shank Road. So, um, volume is substantially heavier on the south side of the roadway. Um, both are within an acceptable range for speed on the 85th percentile, but um, anything that does get done for the bridge itself and how the direction of travel works over the bridge definitely needs to be uh, in joint conversation with with Raffo Township. Okay, so I believe the county had recommended a sign package. Um, they they did, um, and that I think is the last page of their initial study. Um, concern from staff is simply we already have a significant number of signs down through there. Um, there's varying opinions of whether or not adding an additional eight or 10 signs, I think two, four, six, eight, 10 additional signs um, would truly make any difference in addition to what's there, but that is, that is what's included in the... Uh, so I guess my question uh, would be back to staff, are these signs are specific in size are the ones that they're proposing the same ones or same size that we have out there now? And are they in the same locations? I honestly did not have a chance to look at this, okay. but um, we, we are following PennDOT's guidelines on signage. So I imagine they're not gonna be much difference. Um, again, we've, we've signed out <laughs> the whole area. I, I don't <laughs> know what difference if they haven't been listening to those. And I think again, um, what Ms. Garber was alluding to was it was a study of the of the bridge itself, not so much our traffic problem that we have with that, <clears throat> you know, regarding the elevation change coming out of the bridge and people, um, you know, going through there with with the larger trailers and that sort of thing. I think they looked at it more from a damage standpoint than than the traffic part of it. And they made recommendations to us. To that would encroach on the property owners to make wider turn options for those vehicles. They don't want to bar the <clears throat> pickups with the 18 foot or plus trailers. They wanted to make it so that those units would have access to the bridge. So um, I don't know that it helps us much. Yeah, turning turning lanes at that point is such a short distance from the bridge to the actual radius that you need. Um, they're still not going to be able to get over enough for another car who would be coming around the corner. So I, I again, I don't know how useful the study really ended up being. I think the study also included a, a change to one direction. Uh, if I remember my conversation with Cindy correctly, they had indicated a suggestion to make. Harrisman, perhaps one direction. Um, so it, it again, it was the feeling of staff that the study indicated what would prevent the big trucks from hitting the bridge through signage, um, but didn't necessarily address the two municipal sides of what we can do together to move move forward and okay change things. So so. Um... On our, are we able to at least take a look at this um, as far as what they proposed and put together some type of an exhibit that indicates so that we can see as we're sitting here where the signs are currently and what has been proposed? Sure. Is that yes. something we can do for our next meeting? Absolutely. And I would also be curious in the size. I mean, some of these are 24 by 24 that they're recommending. And I'd be curious to see what's in place out that's, there now. That's pretty much the standard okay. size. Yeah. I is. mean, you can go up to 36 by 36. Or, okay. um, but yeah, I, I think 
the signs are probably already at the PennDOT recommended okay. size. Um, for myself, I don't have an appetite to change it to a one-way um, direction. I don't know about the rest of the board. It's difficult uh, to enforce. Not really uh, gung-ho about it. Okay. Um, so why don't we let's... Then I guess I'd consider it. <clears throat> why don't we take this up next month, have staff... Uh, create that exhibit for us, take a look at where, where the signs are currently and where the county has, has recommended them. So someone in touch with Rafu Township, I understand I saw something somewhere that we had talked with them and they were trying to come to a solution also. Cindy indicated to me that she has had conversations with their manager as well, mm -hmm. um, but that she didn't have a feeling for what their board um, what the appetite of their board was. So, but her conversations with Rafa Township Manager were that they also were interested in a positive solution all around. <laughs> Just again, it's it's a difficult situation that there doesn't seem to be a an obvious or a simple fix to. So no. okay, anything else on this? Or let me <clears throat> Any comments from the audience on Shank Mill Bridge? Nothing? Okay. Uh, new business. Uh, any new business from the board or staff? I have none. None. No. Okay. Public comment. Yes, ma'am. And just do me a favor when you speak, make sure that you're right up on that microphone so that we have it for the minutes. Okay. Thank you. So can we start off with your names? Sure. Um, my name is Kara Torres, and this is Meredith Laston. Good evening. My name is Kara Torres. I'm the mother of three small boys residing in East Enfield Township at 1609 Wheatland Avenue. This is my neighbor and friend Meredith Laskin, who has a 17 month old daughter. I've been living on Wheatland Avenue for seven years and over that time have witnessed cars passing by my front yard at faster and faster speeds. Mm -hmm. Since having children and playing outside so much with them, it has really opened my eyes to the looming danger of one of them getting hit by a car. Two weeks ago while playing outside on a sunny April afternoon, my children and I witnessed a Mini Cooper pass by our home at such a high rate of speed that it prompted me into action. We're asking to present to you the information we have compiled and the concerns we have secondary to living on Wheatland Avenue. Our ultimate goal would be to obtain speed bumps. To begin, we passed out two maps to orient everyone to where Wheatland Avenue is located. 
Our neighborhood is located behind Columbia Avenue, directly behind the Columbia Plaza, with stores Tuesday mornings, Dollar General, McDonald's, Wine and Spirits, to name a few. Our neighborhood has no entry to Good Drive nor Marietta Avenue, and we are within walking distance of Little Conestoga River, Fry's Nursery, and Wheatland Hills Park. The speed limit in our neighborhood is 25 miles per hour, but ultimately we are here because it is not adhered to. Um, we're just going to lay out the five things we have on the poster. So um, Meredith is going to start. Yes, I'm, I'm Meredith Lasden. I've lived on Wheatland Avenue for three years um, this fall, and I have a 17-month-old daughter. She's Beauty pie in the yellow. Um, so on Wheatland Avenue, there are, there are no stop signs at all. Um, that means that there's no checkpoint within the entire 0.8 miles to decrease the speed of someone driving. Um, par the parallel roads of Ridgeview Avenue and Wilson Avenue, Ridgeview has four stop signs and um, Wilson has six stop signs. There's some new development on Wilson. Um, they've been doing a lot of construction there. So many cars zip down the close, the close to one mile Wheatland Avenue to bypass traffic backlogs, sometimes on Columbia Avenue. Other neighbors um, that know the neighborhood well, they zoom up and down Wheatland Avenue because they realize the stark fact that there's no stop sign at all requiring them to slow down like there is on, um, Wheat, on Ridgeland and Wilson. Um, some of the delivery drivers, the FedEx and UPS drivers are some of the worst offenders. Um, they're racing past our homes at frightening rates of speed, having no vested interest in the safety of the residents. Uh, number two, Wheatland Avenue is a very narrow road. Our street measures 18 and three fourths feet. Since our road was built, the PA generally assembly 1933 Act 69, Section 2306 has passed legislation that states the width of public roads in townships should be no less than 33 feet, which is almost double the width of Wheatland Avenue. Bar Boulevard and Farmingdale are roads within our township equipped with four speed bumps and to boot are 33 feet wide. When my two and my four-year-old are cruising the neighborhood in their favorite John Deere tractor, <laughs> and I'm pushing the baby in a stroller next to them, it makes for very tense walks because of how fast cars are whizzing past us and the absence of sidewalks. Furthermore, when cars, landscaping, trucks with trailers or construction vehicles are parked on the side of the road, it further decreases visibility and even more narrows the available space for cars and people to share. Our stretch of Wheatland Avenue is saturated with young families and small children. 23 children are within one-tenth of a mile, which is in the second map. 19 of those are six years old or younger, detailed in that map. Even more children will soon be populating the street as two neighbors are pregnant and expecting in the fall. That would make 25. The third leading cause of death for children ages five to nine is being hit by a car, 70% of which are hit by cars in their own neighborhoods. Even despite the closest supervision, accidents can occur when drivers are speeding and or distracted. We've included photos of the kids in our neighborhood. Um, so point number four is the high foot traffic. One of the many perks of our neighborhood that we love so much and its location um, is that it's very walkable. So we're fortunate to be able to walk to the Lidl grocery store um, on the corner of Good Drive and Columbia Avenue, uh, to the McDonald's and Columbia Avenue, Rita's, <coughs> Tobias Frog Restaurant, Turkey Hill, as well as many others. Um, we can also get into Lancaster City quickly by either walking or riding a bike. Ample number of neighbors take daily walks with their spouses or dogs. Um, families walk, bike, ride strollers, and head to the creek, the park, or they simply walk around the neighborhood. Our neighborhood is ideal for exploring on foot. This minus the narrow streets and speeding cars, um, which equals a recipe for impending disaster and stress. And the neighborhood petition that my boys and I, as the neighborhood uh, members sign, we walked and um, discussed our concerns with many neighbors who were in support. And 
we had a total of 38 neighbors sign the petition. So we are proposing speed bumps on Wheatland Avenue so cars can no longer whip down the entire close to mile stretch of road at any speed which they choose. The second, uh, the two speed bumps are highlighted on the map. Um, um, we chose these areas because they are centered and positioned precisely in the 10th of mile stretch of Wheatland Avenue, most heavily populated by small children. Uh, we also would love to hear your suggestions in regards to additional traffic calming techniques, such as possible stop signs and watch children signs. Please help to make our neighborhood safer for us all to enjoy. And we look forward to you all investigating and solving the speeding plight on our road. Thank you for your time. Um, so I'm going to go first. And <laughs> this is, um, we get a lot of complaints similar to this. Um, and so we've adopted a policy that we were first would like to study the road, um, take a look and examine what the speeds actually are there. It's different than when you're standing still and you see a car go by. And I'm sure there are instances where they're speeding, but um, as you saw in our report earlier today, um, it's good to have the actual data um, when we're making these decisions. You cite two areas that um, for me are a pet peeve with the uh, speed bumps. Uh, we have over speed bumped that uh, development um, and no, not yours, but the ones that you had indicated. Um, and part, part of that, the reason in my view that they're still there is we're in the process of making some major traffic improvements in that area. And my hope is that we're gonna revisit that and right size. Uh, that development uh, for, for those speed bumps. With every speed bump also comes signs. There's four signs for every speed bump. And I'm sure if you were in those developments, you would notice all the signs <laughs> regarding uh, the speed bumps there. So I think we need first to study your, your street, get what the speeds are, what the 85th percentile, which means what most of the traffic um, is doing on that road, uh, number one. Number two, we can look at, um, it may be possible that over time traffic's increased at some of these intersections and maybe a stop sign could be warranted um, along one of these intersecting uh, of roadways. I think that's something we can look at as well. Um, and, uh, you know, take a look at also doing maybe some enforcement uh, in that area uh, as well. Um, I'm just a little bit resistant to the speed bumps because um, we, we get a lot of people come in for them and then when they go in, we get a lot of people come back and say, we don't want them. Um, and they become um, more of a dividing factor among the neighborhood than it does about bringing people together. So the end goal is to make sure that we have a safe street. Um, and I'm not trying to put you off on that. I just, I would like the speed bumps to be the very last part of that discussion. Want them because it makes them slow down? No, it's, um, it's more about the noise for the neighbors where the speed bumps go in, um, uh, the noise and the, um, they aren't very effective. The ones that you cite, I believe one of them for sure in the neighborhood that, that you had cited about the ones that are there not to spec. Um, and from now on, the ones we put in have to be to spec. And it, it's not as effective as slowing the vehicles down as you think. Um, so it's, it's really that, that's the big issue. In addition for us, it creates um, a hazard for snow plows um, as well, it creates a challenge. Um, Perry can speak to that, but, um, and I'm anxious to hear my fellow board members on this. About a year ago, there was concern brought to us from the homeowners association from your area. And <clears throat> our response was similar that we would study it. And we did to some extent, we also asked them if they could get tag numbers, license tag numbers from vehicles that are speeding in your area. Looking at this map, it appears to me that the stop signs were placed to give priority to the northbound or southbound traffic off of Columbia Avenue. 
uh, and it was stopping the other traffic as a safety measure. Once they get to Wheatland, they're where they want to be, I guess. So it wasn't quite as much of a concern. But I appreciate your, your, your dilemma here. And everything Mr. Uh, Wigglesworth says is, is been very challenging for speed bumps. You're the, you're the first, I think, that came in and really asked for them, so to speak. And I'm about to put my own up in front of my house. So. <laughs> um, but if in the interim of our looking into this, which we shall do, uh, you, you can identify some tag numbers, it'd be helpful. I'd speculate as we did before, most of the offenders are ones that live in your development. Are. I mean, yeah. the instance with the Mini Cooper, I was so shaken and rattled because my little guy was like eight feet away from the road. And of course I'm watching them, but I packed all the kids up in a stroller, carried the baby. We trolled the neighborhood. We found the Mini Cooper politely. We knocked on the door and I said, excuse me, sir, who just drove home in a Mini Cooper? And he got white because he knew his wife, I'm sure has a lead foot. And he apologized profusely. The wife couldn't come down, but to my happiness, she has not passed my house at all since that time because now she's going probably on a road with stop signs to get down to Glenbrook where she lives. So and it's just these cars, they zoom by and my boys are up at, you know, like little kids, seven in the morning, we're out by eight o'clock. Cars are just whizzing down there at 9.30, 10 a.m. Like there's no tomorrow. And I wanna be able to be outside and I wanna be able to walk to the park with my kids. I mean, that's the like benefits of my neighborhood. We sure. want to. We want to be safe there. I think ultimately, like, we see a big difference of speed on the three and the other. Ms. Laskin, can you please use the microphone? Oh, sure. Sorry. Um, I think ultimately we we see a big difference in speed of traffic on the the parallel roads that run completely the same length that Wheatland does, um, even further a little bit. But um, Ridgeview and um, Wilson have multiple stop signs on them, and it does slow traffic down. And that's ultimately what we're looking for. Like, um, you know, we we have little kids. We are we love our neighborhood, and we just really want it to be safe for them. So I think, I mean, I speak for myself, but I think Kara as well. And in, in that, we're open to any suggestions. We, you know, speed bumps are what we're asking for. But really, what we want is for traffic to be slower so that our kids can play safely. We are counseled that stop signs may not be used to control speed. So that's one reason we've gotten into the speed bump mode, I guess. Um, Is there- But it could be a possibility that the traffic, if it's increased, you know, we can take a look at, there's like two, yeah, yeah whether they, there's enough cross traffic there to make it a four way stop. Um, I mean, the size of our neighborhood has grown in recent years as well. Glenbrook that's a, attached to our neighborhood has added several houses and all along Wilson, the mm -hmm. other side of Wilson, they've built multiple houses there. So, I mean, um, excuse my ignorance, but is there, is there a reason why the speed is what it is in that area too? Like 25 feels very fast for me and that's what it is. Is it from the population when the roads were put in or can you, would you mind explaining that a little bit? I mean, we would take 15 yeah. happily. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know, Mr. My recollection oh. from Chief Skiles was that 25 was the lowest that we can set. That's the minimum that's state correct. allowance for a residential road anywhere anywhere there they're, that, that's the minimum I've speed seen that they're allowed to put up lower maybe around schools or private property but i don't have to, i think on a public street it's yeah public road the minimum 25. is 25 so the was, school zones 15 i, I may they're I, different they're that, that's designated for seen. the school zone curves you can also lower them on curves but you have to do studies to prove that the car can only make it around it at 15 or whatever but again, the thing you can look at there is also a sight distance at some of these intersections to see if, if it's warranted that if you can't see, a stop sign may be warranted at that point, but you're mm -hmm. correct, the stop signs are not allowed to control speed. And it's kind of, a, not quite a state law, but that's the, that's the gist of it. 
And I was gonna just add one other downside of speed bumps is that they seem to bring out the worst behavior in some drivers, which we found on Spring Valley Road, which is where these people are from, where people do smoky burnouts on top of them as a kind of a protest, because you're slowing them down and they guess they, maybe some people take that personally. So they decide they're gonna punish the neighbors who asked for it or allowed it. So that may not happen on your street, but that is what we found on Spring Valley Road. We had a few people ask for speed bumps and a larger number of people after they were put up to have them removed. So it's kind of a touchy, it's not a simple thing of just putting them in and they work. So it's not necessarily gonna um, happen that way. Lieutenant Brubaker. Yes, I have a couple things to just ask you guys. Um, do you have a perceived time of day that you feel as though the, the problem primarily is? Um, so I work part-time, so I'm home um, a couple weekdays as well as the weekends. Uh, I feel like though the entire day, there's just those choice people that are speeding. Um, at the end of the day though, around the four to the 5.30 hour, when people are coming home from work, I feel like the speed is higher. That's what I've been observing. Definitely around rush hour in, into the evening hour. Evening. Okay. Yeah. I've sat on, when I was pregnant, I sat on the porch for hours at a time because it was okay. COVID and there was nothing else to do. And, <laughs> and that seemed to be where the majority of the speeding happened. Wait, okay. Is it possible? Um, is it maybe people just getting tired of uh, dealing with Columbia Avenue traffic and finding a, a shortcut around it? Yeah, because they can whip right in at the Turkey Hill. Right. They can zoom around Cornell, zoom up with Wheatland Avenue, and then hope someone nice lets them out at the top of Columbia Avenue. So they've missed the entire traffic. Do uh, I know you you had you'd said your address was Torres. Um, are we okay, the police department using your driveway for any Absolutely. type of speed enforcement efforts? Yeah. Okay. There's it's, actually a, a question the street there's like a little hideout spot if you would use a radar gun as well <laughs> oh i wish oh. <laughs> yeah. my my sons would be all about that okay i would love that okay and can we also um use your your yard for we have message boards that you know flash people's yeah. speeds that kind of thing you are you both okay with, with that being used if need be okay um other than the the people that we think are using it to bypass columbia avenue Certainly your neighborhood in itself, um, you probably have a lot of residents that are also, right? Have, have you guys done anything social media wise with the Wheatland Hills Facebook group or the next door app to, to try and talk to your neighbors or put it out that way as far as versus going and knocking on doors like, hey, you know, we went to the township meeting, the township's gonna, police department, we're gonna all work, but we need you as the residents to also work with us and, you know, kind of, plead what you're indicating here with the amount of small children, which I totally understand. Um, but if that's not an avenue you've taken and either one of you have access to that, that might be a good, we, a good source. We, or I personally have done that, but our, our like board, I'm not, yeah, the neighborhood yeah, watch the neighborhood type of association, community. whatever. Yes. Um, they, they have on multiple occasions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, on specifically the next door app. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can move back around after this meeting and maybe give him a copy of yeah. the maps outlining the children and maybe write up a small paragraph about what we presented here yeah. because we do have a flyer that goes out seasonally. Mm -hmm. So I can um, hopefully get that also in the spring flyer. Okay. Which hopefully will be back Okay. Um, and I just wanted to let you both know, um, Mr. Lefevre's memory is, is spot on. We did a, a traffic study uh, May 4th through the 10th of last year. Uh, I know you're on the 1600 block. We did it on the 1700 block. I remember okay. Um, and uh, the, the speed volume numbers that we got there, um, the average speed was 21 miles an hour. Um, the 85th percentile, which is basically the speed of which people drive and feels the safe to drive. Um, we also have limitations on uh, with municipal police, what, what speeds we can stop people at. Um, that was 27 miles an hour was the, the speed at a year ago, as far as the, the data that we received, uh, which gave us 1% of enforceable violations. Um, 
like any speed study, we have some outliers. So we did record a, a pretty high speed or two within that period of time. Um, but the, the bulk of the people that were through during the speed study were within reason as far as speeds. But, um, you know, when a car passes you at three feet away at 27 miles an hour, it absolutely feels like it's zipping much faster than that. So, but that's the, the volume and the, the data that we got then, but we'll buy, absolutely put your street on our list to, uh, to do another speed study here in the next few weeks. Okay. And I think ultimately like your, your point that it, it feels fast. It does. Um, the road is so narrow too. Four. The road is so oh, narrow. Yeah. We'll come through at 25 because I'm, I'm sure they do stay. Yeah, 25 is fast when you're when you're standing next to it. It's, Especially when you it have feels a, fast. A one year old with you too, you know, like it. it Understand. Fast. So, yeah. So getting the getting the word out, you know, education wise, through the community as well as we'll we'll work on our message boards, and you know our our enforcement will definitely will hit the times you're indicating so with some visibility. Um, see if we can just slow people down just by our presence down there. Um, but if they're already going 25, that's going to be tough for us for enforcement wise. I think it might just more be uh, educational efforts on our end. So. so, and I think we do have the also the speed signs, right? Weren't we going to rotate those that we have on Spring Valley now that give the radar speed? Yes, I think there's some talk of them going up towards uh, 72 and what it's in the near future. Okay, yeah, so we've got the... another meeting recently. Okay. I need to put them up there. So. That's currently where they're at. Yeah. All right. And they're getting a workout. <laughs> they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay, so um, just so I'm clear on our action items, um, we're going to evaluate the road for potential stop signs if there's a site distance or if there's warranted traffic um, at any of those intersections. Um, we're also going to put it on the list to reevaluate for the speed study. Um, can we also uh, take a look at the signage um, and stuff that we have there now as well um, and make sure that, that that's adequate? Did you ladies have anything else? I wonder about a timeline for like, what can we expect? Lieutenant Braybreaker, typically for doing this, the study. The study, um, the study, I would probably say, I'll go with towards the middle to end of May. We have a couple other roads that are already kind of in the queue for the, for the studies. Um, May shouldn't be a problem. Um, as far as uh, our visibility and getting, probably what we'll do is the message boards typically slow people down for a little bit of period of time. We like to do the traffic study first. So we have statistical data before we put out the signs that then say slow down. Um, but we'll at least get some, for sure, some visibility. If you guys work on the, the public broadcast end of it and uh, we'll Get things going. So I would say it gives four to six weeks to you'll see some things picking up. Is that acceptable? Yeah. Okay. I know it's getting nice out, so you're outside more. So I, yeah, I, I'm definitely not going to say till August. I understand you want us to nip it in the butt before uh, before summer. So, you bet. Ladies, thank you for your presentation. Yes. Yeah. Well prepared. Can you just ensure that your contact information is clear on that sign in sheet so that um, township manager or uh, the lieutenant can reach back out to you if they have other questions. So the evaluation for the stop signs, who will do that? Is that? I, is I typically do those on the, on the, the smaller streets. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's not hard to do. It's, you know, you is can, that something that can happen the next couple of weeks? Oh, I can, I can do that possibly this week yet. Okay. The beginning of next week. So. Okay. And um, can we, if we have their information, can we let them know what we find on that? at a time. Sure. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you. Can I add one thing? For, mm -hmm. So, you know, our traffic study, the devices we use are pretty inconspicuous. So you might not actually know that they're down there just for what that's worth. So.
weekend or so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Uh, hearing none, we'll adjourn the meeting um, at 647 and we will be back at 7 p.m. for the regularly scheduled Board of Supervisor meeting.